Hello, I'm Tracy Fowler, and I recently took the Spotlight Initiative and Social Good Club Culture Change Commitment to End Violence Against Women and Girls. Today, I'm speaking about gender-based violence in the Caribbean and how we can end violence against women and girls with Dr. Carlene Radix, head of the Human and Social Division at the OECS, Kevin Liverpool, third chair, Civil Society Regional Reference Group, Caribbean Regional Spotlight Initiative, and administrator for the Caribbean Male Action Network, Carrie Mann, and Bernice Antoine, youth advocate, Trinidad and Tobago Youth Ambassador, who is also a member of the advisory group the Spotlight UNICEF UE study on CMEU. My name is Carleen Radix. I'm a medical doctor by training. I am Grenadian by upbringing and a Trinidadian by birth. Um, and I am currently I'm the head of the Human and Social Division at the OECS Commission. We cover education, health, and um, you know social social protection. I'm Kevin Liverpool. I am from Trinidad and Tobago as well calling in from Montserrat, where I've been working for the past uh, few weeks. Um, I work in this field of uh, gender equality, promoting gender equality by working with men and boys. I am a director of the Coalition Against Domestic Violence in Trinidad and Tobago. I am also the administrator of the Caribbean Male Action Network, which is a regional organization with uh, presence in nine Caribbean countries now. My name is Bernice Einstein. I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm the female co-chair for the Youth Advisory Group of United Nations Population Fund. So basically what we do there is we give recommendations based on like the HIV policy, the HIV AIDS policy. We give the youth recommendation on um, government policies, as well as we help promote um, the importance of sex education in schools and for young adults who know about their bodies. Um, so that's my responsibility. So let's get right to the conversation today. Do you think there's enough awareness around the early signs of abusive behavior? So my immediate answer would definitely have to be no. I think a big portion of that and, you know, why we are not aware of the early signs is sometimes we tend to romanticize it. Um, so like an early sign, for example, would be like, you know, oh, he always want to text me. He want to be next to me. And he's telling me to reply quickly. And we think that's so cute. Um, not knowing that that is actually an early sign of violence. Children begin to, to, to understand that it is possible for someone who say that they love you to inflict physical pain on you, you know, and I'm, I'm speaking about how we use corporal punishment within the Caribbean, you know, and there are some parents who would say to their children, I'm beating you because I love you, you know, so from very early on, we have all of these mixed messages about, you know, what is appropriate within relationships. And I think um, that blurs a lot of the lines later on when it comes to identifying these warning signs. What are your thoughts around the gender stereotypes that help to perpetuate violence against women and girls? In our societies, masculinity is valued more than femininity. When you think of boys and when we think of our own boyhood and growing up, when we wanted to shame another boy, we would say things such as, you are running like a girl, you are playing like a girl, you yeah, are behaving yeah. like a girl. It's also what we put on boys and men because we don't give them the permission and the outlet to, to express um, you know, their emotions, to express their issues. They need to be manly. They're expected to respond in a certain way. And so when they respond with violence, which is often rewarded even between boys as they're growing up, right? If you, if you, you, you need to handle it with violence. So we also perpetuate that with our boys. And then when they get to a situation in which they are unable to, um, you know, deal with their own emo emotions around what is happening, then violence becomes the answer. One of the burning issues that comes up is carnival in the Caribbean, crop over specifically in Barbados. One school of thought is it perpetuates violence against women and girls or negative gender stereotypes. I think first we must recognize that, you know, carnival in itself is a celebration of our resilience as Caribbean persons. 
But I do agree with the statement that some of the behaviors that we see in carnival, specifically like sexual assault, do um, perpetuate violence against women. And a, a, a particular issue that I'm particularly passionate about that I want to draw attention to is the blatant disrespect of women in our lyrics. And that, you know, men, women, children regularly party to, like these tunes are just playing in and out their heads, tunes like somebody could touch a gap here. Like, if we were to sit down and really analyze these lyrics, would we really be singing them? And so I definitely think it's normalizing that, you know, pulling a girl and touching a girl like this and like that is, you know, definitely, definitely contributing to the issue of violence against women. And another um, thought I would like to bring to that is the whole idea of victim blaming and, you know, look how she dressed, she looked for that. Yeah that especially we see that a lot during carnival time so definitely i think those are two issues or two behaviors that we see especially during carnival time that perpetuate um you know violence against women what happens at carnival is that it's a reflection of our own society and behaviors that come to life yeah. so i don't want to i don't want to blame the celebration or blame the the carnival but it is it becomes a, a space where um uh, certain things become amplified and we've made it okay for those behaviors to be amplified. And I'm, I'm a health professional. So of course the role of alcohol is also a contributor in terms of judgment and, and, and other issues um, at the time of carnival that can, that can contribute to poor judgment. What actions can people take in their own lives to create a safer society for women and girls? We believe that men must be part of the solution to violence against women and girls. So any change must first start with that inner change, with inner work and with healing. It requires men, therefore, to be vulnerable. We also ask men to listen to the voices of women. Listen so that we can understand how uh, misogyny and sexism affects the women in our lives, you know, um, because sometimes men do things and they're not thinking about the consequences. We have a responsibility if there are men or boys around us who are using hurtful language or speech, we have a responsibility to call them out, call other men out, but also call them in to have a broader conversation. I would definitely encourage persons to analyze how every single thing that they do, every action that they take and every, their language as well, how does that intersect with gender? Is it helping perpetuate um, norms that are toxic to women and men? Or is it, you know, aiding in our fight to reduce violence against women and this whole concept of a gender lens and understanding how every single decision that you make is impacted by gender. And when I learned that concept, that blew my mind because simple instances where I didn't even think that that wouldn't even be impacted by gender, it caused me to be intersectional. Now I analyze my decision, like when I, you know, in my community meetings, how do I speak? Like what kind of language do I use? If I was to, you know, thinking about the time, even the time as I hold my meetings as well is impacted by gender. Everyone just needs to be more aware, a little bit more intentional, a bit more aware of their own perceptions, um, where, what is going on around them and be intentional in intervening where they can um, in situations in which um, it's appropriate to intervene. Thank you so much uh, for chatting with me today. This was a great conversation. And, and of course, we all agree that we all have a ways to go where this is concerned. To find out more about the culture change commitment and what you can do in your own life and industry to end violence against women and girls, go to spotlightinitiative.org slash get involved.